Good evening, everyone. Senior producer Stella Gould joined the program as an intern in 1982, the year we went on the air. Tonight, we open a Chronicle producer's notebook on the eve of her departure. She came from the world of music and led a double life here at WCVB, producing both Chronicle shows and live concerts with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. In nearly four decades of storytelling and travel, there are countless memorable people, places, and adventures. While it's hard for her to pick the favorites, some naturally stand out. We begin with a look back at this rare interview with John Williams. These universally recognized notes instantly evoke the haunting image of a great white shark. John Williams has penned scores to more than a hundred films, and in this, his 80th year, he shows no signs of stopping. And then Boston itself is a kind of wondrous place. My mother's a Boston girl. My father was from Bangor, Maine. I always say at Symphony Hall, I have the best seat in the house, because I have the greatest orchestra in the world in front of me and the dearest audience in the world behind me. There is also a curious family connection. As fate would have it, Williams' grandfather, a carpenter named David Towner, worked on the construction of Symphony Hall in the late 1800s. And the, the family story was that while working on Symphony Hall up on one of the upper interior walls, he dropped his hammer with his initials DT on it, and the hammer just fell down into the lower works and disappeared and is probably still there. So that's the story. <laughs> that I heard, you know, as a child, and that never think, I, well, Symphony Hall was in Boston, I probably would never go there. And all these years later, having this thing turn around in that way, it's a little bit a little spooky. Symphony Hall says Williams is a magical space, one of the top three concert halls in the world. It is a, a miracle of acoustics, for, of, particularly for orchestral music. Mm -hmm. I love to stand in the hall after the concerts where everyone's gone home and when it's completely silent you can almost hear the hall and it can almost seem to be speaking at least to me. It spoke to Steven Spielberg who chose Boston over Hollywood to record the soundtracks to first Schindler's List then Saving Private Ryan. Stephen was here, Tom Hanks came and sat in the balcony and loved it all. And I took the tracks, the recordings, back to Hollywood and our sound engineers all said, oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, the low end is so rich and it's just so lovely. It is. January 2012 marked 40 years that John Williams and Steven Spielberg have worked together. And in 40 years, we've never had an argument, truly never had an argument, and, and, and not really even a dispute about what's appropriate for a particular scene. It also, he's very loyal, and it bespeaks a lot about his character as a person, as a sweet man, who is, when you meet him, he's disarmingly simple and approachable. And I, I always say, at least professionally, the luckiest day in my life was meeting him. <laughs> And of course, there is his collaboration with George Lucas. Star Wars tops the list of the American Film Institute's 100 years of film scores. Whether hero or villain, love story or tale of adventure. Go back to space. This soft-spoken gentleman has not only mastered the art of storytelling through music, he has redefined it. And the variation from day to day in the work that, that I do is the thing that sustains the fun. Wow, and that was 10 years ago, mm. and he's almost 90, showing no signs of slowing down. He'll perform at Tanglewood this summer and then on to Symphony Hall in September. You know, John Williams has more Oscar nominations than any mm. other living person, 52 in all. That's, That's second only to Walt Disney. <laughs> and, of course, as you heard, the Oscar-winning Schindler's List score was recorded right here at Symphony Hall. Incredible. All right. Up next, sailing aboard the Sea Cloud.